ich nicht garantieren, dass ich das übersetzen kann. Ich glaube, der soll einfach losreden. She wants to know what quantum physics is. What? Quantum physics. What? What? Explain it simply, she asked. Explain quantum physics simply? Uh, when I moved from Los Angeles, I moved into what I thought was Santa Cruz. Then we had something stolen from our car. And we called the police, and it turned out we didn't live in Santa Cruz. We lived in a town called Capitola. The post office thought we lived in Santa Cruz, but the police thought we lived in Capitola. I started investigating this, and a reporter on the local newspaper told me we didn't live in either Santa Cruz or Capitola. We lived in an unincorporated area called Live Oak. Now, quantum mechanics is just like that, except that in the case of Santa Cruz, Capitola, and Live Oak, we don't get too confused because we remember we invented the lines on the map. But quantum physics seems confusing because a lot of people think we didn't invent the lines. So it seems hard to understand how a particle can be in three places at the same time without being anywhere at all. But when you remember that we invented all the boundaries, borders, and lines just like the Berlin Wall, then quantum mechanics is no more mysterious than the fact that I live in three places at the same time. No Chinese raised on I Ching has ever found quantum mechanics puzzling. It's only puzzling to people raised on Aristotelian logic where things are either A or not A. In the I Ching, things are A and not A at the same time. With quantum mechanics, you can prove that light is made out of particles experimentally. You can build up a whole mathematical theory of light traveling in little particles called photons, and you can do experiments, and the experiments will give you a pattern showing that light is traveling like particles. You, we've also got a whole mathematical theory built up showing that light travels as waves. And we've got experiments that will show you that light travels as waves. As one uh, physicist in the 1920s said, it looks as if the damn light is waiting to see how we're going to do the experiment and then deciding which way it's going to travel. <laughs> Schrodinger said, I wish I never got mixed up with this Vedanta quantum springer I, this goddamn quantum jumping. The modified Copenhagen view is light is neither waves nor particles until we look, and then it, then it adjusts itself depending on what we're looking at it with. An electron is not anywhere until we look. And when we look, the electron decides to be somewhere as long as we're looking. As soon as we stop looking, the electron is everywhere again. Every model we make uh, tells us how our mind works it, uh, as much as it tells us about the universe. These are, these are just uh, human uh, symbolic games. Mm -hmm. The universe itself uh, is bigger than any of our models. According to Zen Buddhism and most forms of Buddhism and quantum mechanics, any description of the universe which leaves you out is inaccurate because any description of the universe is a description of the instrument that you use to take your reading of the universe. And if the only instrument you use is your own nervous system, you've got to include your own nervous system in your description of the universe. So, ergo, any model we make does not describe the universe. It describes what our brains are capable of saying at this time. Long before quantum mechanics, the, the, the German philosopher Husserl said that all perception is gamble. Every type of bigotry, every type of racism, sexism, prejudice, every dogmatic ideology that, that allows people to kill other people with a clear conscience, every stupid cult, every superstition-ridden religion, every kind of ignorance in the world, are all results from not realizing that our perceptions are gambles. We believe what we see and then we believe our interpretation of it. We don't even know we're making an interpretation most of the time. We think this is reality. In philosophy, that's called naive realism. What I perceive is reality. And philosophers have, have refuted naive realism every century for the last 2,500 years, starting with Buddha and Plato. And yet most people still act on the basis of naive realism. Now the argument is, well, maybe my perceptions are inaccurate, but somewhere there is accuracy. The scientists have it with their instruments. That's how we can find out what's really real. 
But relativity and quantum mechanics have demonstrated clearly that what you find out with instruments is true relative only to the instrument you're using and where that instrument is located in space-time. So there is no vantage point from which real reality can be seen. We're all looking from the point of view of our own reality tunnels. And uh, when we begin to realize that we're all looking from the point of view of our own reality tunnels, we find it is much easier to understand where other people are coming from, or the ones who don't have the same reality tunnel as us do not seem ignorant or deliberately perverse or lying or hypnotized by some mad ideology. They just have a different reality tunnel, and every reality tunnel might tell us something interesting about our world if we're willing to listen.